Hi Hive fans and welcome to another video where I teach you how to play Hive like a champion. The game that I'll be replaying in this video is in response to a recent request by a viewer to do more videos for beginners using Classic Hive without the expansions. So here goes. Make sure that you leave me a note if there's anything specific that you'd like to see covered in a future video. I'd love to hear from you. And while you're at it, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Let's see what lessons we can learn from this game between Hub Games Good and me. As always, the game is played at Board Game Arena, replayed at BoardSpace.net, the best place on the internet to play Hive, because this site has the absolute best game review. Playing with just the original pieces limits your choices for a starting bug. Do you know what makes a good starting bug? A defensive bug. What is a good defensive bug, you might ask? One that's not limited by the freedom to move rule. One that can jump or climb out of an enclosed space, possibly freeing a kill spot next to your queen. In Classic Hive, this means either the beetle or the grasshopper. Knowing this, both players start with the grasshopper. Hive rules do not allow you to move any pieces until after the queen has been played, so another key is to get your queen in play early. Again, it seems that both players understand this, both players playing the queen as their second bug. My opponent placed the queen in line, while I placed the queen in elbow. In this game, the difference between the two doesn't come up, but in some games it will. I'll be searching for a game that demonstrates that difference. To make sure that you don't miss it when I find it and publish that video, make sure you click the notification bell. White does a good job of bringing in an ant. And as black, I always try to make sure I get a good double defender position so I bring in a grasshopper. This does, however, allow the spawning of a second white ant. keep my newly spawned spider from pinning an ant, white must either move ant number one or pin the spider. White elects to attack, allowing the spider to attack as well. Many beginning players pin the defending grasshopper from here, but this pin is a false pin. White makes the better choice, placing a true pin. Let's take a moment and describe the difference between a false pin and a true pin, starting with the true pin. Note how there are three kill spots that white must fill to surround the black queen. Order is critical. When this one is filled, the defending black grasshopper is free to jump out, so it must be the last one filled. If this one is filled too early, the queen can escape, so the proper order given no interference from black would be first here, then here, and finally here. Now let's look at what would happen if white had placed a false pin. The first kill spot remains the same here, but now note how both of these spots are trigger spots. When either of them is filled, a defending black grasshopper is free to jump. White cannot attack without freeing one of the defenders. This demonstrates the advantage, in this case at least, of a true pin over a false pin. When a black ant spawns, the white ant deserts its pinning position and pins the ant. This is a loss of tempo for white. In my book, Play Hive Like a Champion, I describe the three keys to winning at Hive. They are mobility, strength, and tempo. Often a Hive player sacrifices one of these in order to gain in another. Here, white sacrifices a tempo to reduce black's mobility. The black spider spawns with an angle of attack to a kill spot, and the white grasshopper does the same. By self-pinning the white ant, white allows black to spawn a second ant, and when the grasshopper attacks, black plays a little anti-spawn defense, taking the way option of using the grasshopper to spawn attackers, especially beetles, close by the black queen. Then when the white beetle spawns, the black spider pins it but white does get a second defender. 
When white self pens the ant a second time, black ant number three spawns. This too is a good lesson. Think carefully about using an ant as a spawn point. The resulting self pen may allow your opponent the opportunity to spawn an important bug. And then a critical mistake. Prior to this placement, the spider had an angle of attack to the black queen. Now the spider's angle of attack is interrupted and black immediately pins the newly spawned ant. Now let's examine another important concept for beginning hive players, bug counting. Both players must fill three kill spots to win. Both players have three bugs in reserve, but there are a couple of major differences. One black kill spot is protected behind the gate, while all three white kill spots are wide open. Both players have two defending bugs, one of which is pinned with a true pin, one of which is pinned with a false pin. There are two differences, however, that give me hope for victory. One is the fact that I have both beetles still in reserve. Beetles will be the key. In a situation like this, they can be used to cover a defending bug and negate the weakness of a false pin. The second is that even though each of us have a mobile ant, mine is pinning a grasshopper that's already in a kill spot. The free white ant is pinning another black ant, which is not in a kill spot. If I release the pin on the grasshopper, it does not have a better use elsewhere. But if the white ant releases the pin on the black ant, it can do a lot of damage around the hive. After the white spider pins my ant, I spawn my first beetle. This was a friendly, unranked game, so my opponent felt free to ask me, why did I spawn the beetle in that particular spot? In line, rather than elbow. Isn't the elbow spawn one tempo closer to the White Queen? And the answer is no. It is not one tempo closer, because unless that move is the actual kill shot, that move would free the defending White Beetle. Also, if the Black Beetle spawns here, then the White Ant can release the pin, shifting it to here, place a block to this kill spot, creating a hex trap. If either of these two spots are attacked, the white beetle would be free. The goal of the black beetle, then, is not to attack, but to cover. And then another critical error. Using the white ant as a spawn point sets the ant in a bidirectional pin. Up until now, the white spider always had the threat of moving into the trigger spot here, releasing the pin on the white ant. True pin on the black grasshopper would shift from a true pin to a false pin, but the advantage of having another mobile ant could outweigh the disadvantage of the false pin. Let's stop for a moment and look at white's chances to win. Assume that black does nothing to hinder white's attack. White has three kill spots to fill, two bugs in reserve, a mobile ant, and a mobile white spider. Can white find a series of moves leading to a victory? I'll pause the video here for a moment to see if you can devise a plan. Did you find it? It hinges on taking the kill shot into this spot. If these two spots were filled with bugs from the reserve, the white ant could move to here. The beetle could slide over and take the kill shot. Can white get the two bugs in reserve into these two spots? In theory, yes. Spider here. Grasshopper here. Grasshopper jumps. Spider moves. But that takes four moves. The only other way would be the grasshopper here to take the kill shot. But can the spider get to a kill shot? Yes. Spider here. Spider moves to here. Grasshopper here. Ant here and then the grasshopper takes the kill shot. These are just exercises to help you see how a plan can be made. But unfortunately, black will not stand by and let white do that. Once the black ant is free, white's attack will fall short. White, however, does not see the plan and makes critical error number three. 
Grasshopper spawns and attacks, and the Black Queen escapes. This is one of the six beginner's mistakes highlighted in one of the chapters of my book. If you'd like a copy of that chapter, go to my website, click on the tab Send Me a Sample Chapter, and I'll email it to you. After the Black Queen escapes, White has no chance. At this point, you might say, why doesn't White resign? But I recommend that you always play to the end. Not because you might win, but because you want to see how a Hive Master executes the end game. Black no longer needs to be concerned about defense, so the beetle marches forward. The big pocket surrounding this spawn point assures that the second beetle can spawn and climb atop the hive. White might have lasted a turn or so longer by using the beetle for defense. And at this point, the spider could attack instead of the grasshopper. But the grasshopper leaves fewer movement options for white. And the game ends rather quickly. With the beetle taking the kill shot. Let's review the lessons learned. Protect the angles of attack for your spiders. Be careful to self-pin a mobile ant. Beware particularly of a bi-directional self-pin. Always have a plan for newly spawned bugs. Don't let your opponent's queen escape. I hope you enjoyed this video, but more importantly, I hope that you learned something on your road to you playing hide like a champion. Thanks again for watching. As always, two videos are here. The subscribe button is there. Until next time, this is Randy Ingersoll signing off.